Hey. It's What's been going? a long journey, right? Definitely has. Definitely has. For sure. So what has the journey been like? Leading up until you're sitting in this chair right now. Man, we'd have to go way back. Way back. To the very beginning of time. When I was a little kid. You know, being five, six years old. Being in Germany and hanging out with my best friend Marcel and the journey started there actually the journey started there I used to listen to the new kids on the block and I went over his house one day his dad was lifting weights in the back with the spandex pants purple spandex he don't want to admit it but those purple spandex he was wearing he came through the door and Prince was playing erotic city and it was in that moment that my whole life my whole life changed my whole life changed and uh, I just immersed myself in Prince and Boys to Men. And it's been a long ride, you know, for coming from Germany, then going to Hawaii and doing my thing in Hawaii, then going down to L.A. It's been a long, long journey, but I'm, I'm grateful to be here. And, you know, I'm going to continue on this journey. But it's, um, it's been wild. You know, I've had a lot of ups and downs and, you know, you can't, you can't go down the road to success without a few bumps in the road, for sure. So, yeah. So after that moment with um, Marcel's father introducing you to Prince, how long after did you realize that you had a gift of your own? You know, I, that's that's actually a, an interesting question. I My parents always told me that the first remembrance of anything like that where a musical gift happened was when I was about four. My parents got me a Casio keyboard and they were in the, the room next door and they said I was playing what was on the radio. Um, and it was from that point, I, I've, I've always felt a connection to music, but I didn't really start honing it until, you know, I was about 13 is when I started really tapping into it and going to studios and things like that. But I've always been drawn to music. Um, yeah, they know. Um, so, yeah. So, Prince is associated with the color purple, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think that color is the color that represents sensuality to you as well? Or do you think yeah, that's, I, I feel like all crimson colors do. Uh, the purples, the reds, um, they signify passion, romance, sensuality, um, birth, divine creation, everything in between. And it's something that gravitated me towards Prince when I started coming up with my name, Raspberry Skies, because it was, it was in those moments that he was painting canvases of crimson colors um, that I realized that it wasn't just like on a lyric based um, connection to Prince, it was a visual. He created visuals wherever he went, however he, you know, his, did his music, his songs. They all, they all spoke through pictures vividly. It wasn't just like, you know, you, you, you make a song, it wasn't just like, okay, it's a cool song. Like he would actually paint pictures. So, um, you know, it really drew me that way, for sure. I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. Um, I'm real happy. Like right now. Right now in this moment? Right now in this moment. It really feels surreal, man. It really feels surreal. Four months ago, I was just at my studio making records like I've been doing for the last 20 years. <laughs> and in the blink of an eye and a snapshot in time, it all changed. And now we went just went on a nationwide tour. We're not even finished. We only like halfway through, and the experiences along the way, the the fun, the good times, the bad times. People see me in my best and at my worst, all in one. So um, I feel great though. You know, with the pain and everything that comes along with it, it's still the passion and the drive to do this music. And it's always been that way. You know nothing has ever changed that 
Um, but this just solidifies in stone that I'm on the right path, you know? So. so you've been doing this for a long time and consistency could be an understatement because you think consistency is, is the main thing for people to stay relevant in this game? I think it's the only thing. I, th I think that if you, ha you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're not consistent, it ain't gonna get you very far. But if you have some talent and you just rock with it and you stay consistent, you put in that work day in, day out, grinding, putting your, you know, your head down and just focusing on what you need to do for your passion, you're gonna get real far. But if you just, if you just feel like you're just gonna land in your lap, I don't think that that's gonna happen, you know? It's just the way it goes. But I've always been like that, you know? I've always been a grinder, I've always been a hustler. Um, it's just the way I, I, it's in my DNA to be that way. Where, where would you say you got that drive? You think your parents instilled it in, into you? Absolutely. My parents probably at like, when I was about 12, 13, my dad had, um, he opened up a detail shop. And I learned it from them. And, and really what I learned is to be your own boss because, you know, my dad was just getting out of the military and he wanted to work on, you know, something outside of the military. And he started opening up detail businesses and window tent businesses. And while he was doing that, he was also doing the marketing business. So he was staying real heavy on the hustling side and, and just putting food on the table and making things work, him and my mom. And it really just instilled at me at a, at a teen, as a teenager, like while my friends were out partying and stuff like that, I really saw that like, damn, if I just commit and be intentional with like doing how my parents are doing, like just hustling and working hard at something, that I can have anything I want, you know, so, yeah. Have anything you want, like, like the Timberlands, Cord Triton? Exactly, Titan. exactly. And that's actually cool you brought that, so a little backstory. Timberland and Teddy Riley are my favorite producers. And I was probably 17. And I was watching, I want to say it was MTV. I was watching MTV and I saw Timberland, I think with Jay-Z, and he was working on a Korg Triton. And, the, um, and I just remember saying, in order for me to get to that level, I need to have that keyboard. Um, and this is before computers and everything else. So I was like, okay, if I, I gotta get those sounds, I gotta get that keyboard. That keyboard was $4,000. <laughs> I didn't have $4,000, you know, 17 year old kid. So I just worked, worked, worked my ass off at my dad's shop until, until I had enough saved up and then I bought that Triton and it changed my life because I felt like in that moment in time when I got that Triton, it was like I tapped in to Timbaland. I tapped into the sounds that I heard. I started hearing the strings that he would use. I would start hearing the drum patterns. I was like, that's why, you know? So it, it definitely, but what it did also tell me is like, if you want something bad enough, you'll work as hard as you need to work to make it happen come true for sure guided by something, something from, the, from this world? I definitely do. I think, I'm, I think I've been guided from something outside of this. Um, I've always had that. I've always had a feeling that I'm guided by the universe and, and I've been put on this earth to spread a message and, and use myself as a vessel for the music as a, you know, in whatever way that means. Like, you know, I, I we've been to a few different spots where people have cried, you know what I mean? And, and listening to the music that I'm creating and, and that impact that someone could have emotionally from me creating something for them. So I'm just the vessel, you know, I'm just the vessel, I'm the conduit for emotion. So anything that I can convey to my fans, to people listening, and it's going to make them feel a certain way, no matter if it's sensuality, you know, positive, whatever, any emotion, it's open. You know, but if I can, the, the bottom line is just to create, to make people feel, 
That's why I didn't get into this for the money. It was never about the money. It was always about creating music for people to feel. No, you know, no, uh, no expectations, no obligations. It was always just, I want to create music. When, when you see people getting moved emotionally as much as you as much as you've seen so far did you know when you were in the studio making that particular song it would have an effect on no like you know a lot of all of my creations actually are created in this in the moment um, I don't I don't think about I don't go in with a plan when I'm when I go into the studio when I sit down at, at the keyboard, I never have a plan of what I'm going to do. I let the universe tell me what is going to happen. Um, I've done that forever now, um, where I've just allowed it to come through me. And that's why I don't actually remember, I don't remember my songs, lyrics, and things like that, or the song names themselves, or anything like that, because I'm just using myself as a vessel. Once it's done, I don't remember it anymore. It, it has left my creative brain, and I'm on to the next record or next song. Yeah. Do you think that has something to do with you not writing from a personal space? Probably. Um, probably because I'm not, I'm not introspective with it. I I sit there, and when I'm creating something, I'm creating to tell a story of visual. I see visuals, I see things um, that are not from personal space all the time. Um, but recently, as I get older, I feel like some of my songs do tell, introspect, and, and do sort of show, even though they talk about outward stories, it's I'm starting to open up into the, you know, my introverted world is starting to come out, you know? Um, which is a good thing because, you know, someone who suffers from social anxiety, I remember my first performance being so afraid. My knees were shaking. I was shaking as shit. I was like, I just looked like a deer in headlights. Um, so being able to actually just do that in front of people intimately, the songs that I've created is, is really, for me, I feel is that it's showing that the social and you know social anxiety the stuff that's happening on the surface the stuff that's happening inward could actually music can channel that and get you out of the, your shell you know so yeah yeah so i understand that you've lived in a variety of places including hawaii yeah Germany, la mm -hmm. sacramento what about those places do you think has propelled your music? Wow. So, obviously with Germany, um, there's a piece of me that's where the inception and the creation began of, of music for me with the, you know, with Prince and Boys to Men. And um, it was really a eye-opener for what musicology was. And, and learning not just Prince, but then looking back on what who Prince listened to and, look, and Boys to Men, who did they listen to? It really started changing the whole dynamic of how I listen to music instead of just listening to music on the fundamental level of like, oh, this is a great record. I really started diving deep into all of it. I started diving deep into you know, what, what type of drum machine did Prince use? What type of um, keyboards would he use? What type of mixing console? I really started learning about the process because what's more valuable to me is the, the process of creation. The, the final product is not what's, that's for me to give to the fans to receive. I enjoy the process. I enjoy digging in the dirt. I enjoy the grind of it. I enjoy the creation of it. I enjoy being in the paint, so to speak. I enjoy the 30 hours that I'm putting into a record to finesse it, the process of it. That That is what makes a big thing for me. So being in Germany, doing that, 
And then I moved to Hawaii. And in Hawaii, you learn about the Polynesian sound and the cultural warmth there and the Aloha spirit. So all of that transcends into the music too because I was listening to a lot of artists from the islands, Polynesian artists, and Polynesians in general have such a warm voice and an embracing voice. Um, harmonies that were just immaculate. They were very soothing. Um, so just learning that process through Hawaii and then the music that they would play in Hawaii really helped mold my sound overall. That's why when you hear my records, all my records will have nature in them. You know what I mean? All of my, all my records have nature sounds in them, whether it's rivers, streams, oceans, birds, um, because it's such a big part of my creative process and a, a big part of me as, as a person, you know. I've heard you say you can take the boy away from the islands, but you can't take the islands away or out of the boy. Mm -hmm. How much does that mean to you? There's something about the islands that changes you in such a emotional way. Um, it's hard to even explain unless you've, you've been there. Um, but really what it means is once you go on the islands, once you're there and you experience the aloha, it never leaves you. The love never changes. It doesn't matter who, you know, you've seen some of my fans, you know what I mean? Like the fans that are from the islands, it never changes. The, the love is always there. The aloha spirit is always there. The, the mana, uh, the power of of the islands takes over um, and ha such a profound effect on me um, that even when I'm watching like on TV, I'll be watching TV and Hawaii will come on and I'll just, I will sit there and just it, all of my emotions come out because it literally, the islands are that powerful. Um, and it, it, it's molded me into the man that I am today. Um, it means everything to me. The islands mean everything to me. And I'm always repping the 808 state. Even though I was born in Germany, I, I rep the 808 because the 808 raised me, you know, and made me, you know what I mean? And that was something that, that was my teenage years growing up in that. It really molded me into the man I was, you know. <laughs> 